antibodies to citrullinated proteins such as anti-CCP and ACPA to citrullinate or not to citrullinate? This is the question. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis continuing our series on rheumatology. In the previous video we have discussed rheumatoid factor and C anca and P anca, which is the anti neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibody. Today it's time to citrullinate. Let's roll up our sleeves and get to work. These are my awesome previous rheumatology videos, that's why you should subscribe and save my rheumatology playlist. The golden rule in rheumatology is, no single blood test whatsoever can confirm the diagnosis. Always ask yourself, does the lab test correlate with the clinical picture? Now you're starting to learn, now you're becoming a good doctor. Not some miserable faceless professor with some interesting theories. To understand what citrullination is all about, let's have some lecture about molecular biology. Remember something that was called the DNA? A template is being converted into RNA inside the nucleus. Thanks to RNA polymerase, we call this process transcription. Then RNA is going to become proteins. We call this process translation. And it takes place inside the cytoplasm. Not in the nucleus, in the cytoplasm. Then these proteins are not so mature. We need some modification to make them mature protein products. We call this process post-translational modification, which is like a group of enzymatic reactions. This PTM is really crucial. Now, instead of just a faceless amino acid, let's put arginine here. And here the mature protein product is citrulline. Cool. So DNA template, transcription, now we have RNA. Translation, now we have arginine. Post-translational modification, now we have citrulline. Be specific, it's called deamination, not to be confused with deamination. ID, I've told you, post-translational modification is all about enzymes. This citrulline has some antigenic sites. Antibodies are going to attack this nice, innocent citrulline. And these antibodies are called anti-cyclic citrullinated peptide. Because we are talking proteins here, hello. What's the function of this modification, i.e. citrullination? We don't know. Oh really? Thank you, science. But this post-translational modification occurs in inflammation, hashtag citrullination. This post-translational modification is really, really weird. Thank you, citrulline. I can't imagine my life without you. Limited availability for my 50 hematology cases. Get them before they're gone. Go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. Try to solve all of these vignettes and make grandma happy. So, how do we do this anti-CCP? By ELISA. First, you draw blood, separate the plasma, and add some synthetic peptides containing the citrulline. Oh, and you are testing about anti-CCP antibodies, anti-cyclic citrullinated peptides in the plasma. If they are there, antigen antibody complex will happen. These antigenic peptides include a protein that contains citrulline and has a cyclical structure. That's why we call the antibodies anti-cyclic citrullinated peptides. And now for the first time you understand why we call them anti-CCP. Something your professor will never tell you. Anti-CCP is not the same thing as ACPA. Because anti-CCP is anti-cyclic citrullinated peptide. ACPA is anti-citrullinated protein antibodies. These are antibodies against cyclical peptides. These are antibodies against peptides or modified proteins. So let's talk about this anti-cyclic citrullinated peptide. Positive in 60 to 70% of rheumatoid arthritis patients. It's not that sensitive by definition, but it's very specific. It can predict the progression of rheumatoid arthritis. So if you have positive anti-CCP, you are more likely to get erosions and joint deformity. It carries worse prognosis. 
Anti-CCP antibodies are more predictive of erosion than CRP or ESR. Remember, ESR is a garbage test. CRP is a less trashy test, but trash nonetheless. If a patient has joint pain, no inflammation, and has positive CCP, the patient will get rheumatoid arthritis soon. You better start the treatment now, honey. Which makes anti-CCP an excellent test for screening at-risk patients. Remember, anti-CCP, not sensitive, but very specific for rheumatoid arthritis. Not only that, it's excellent for screening at-risk patients. Patients who are at risk of developing rheumatoid arthritis. Some pro tips here. Rheumatoid factor, more sensitive, less specific. Anti-CCP is the exact opposite. Less sensitive, but very specific for rheumatoid arthritis. The presence of both rheumatoid factor and anti-CCP in the serum carries worse prognosis. You will have more aggressive symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis, unfortunately. And if you have anti-CCP and anti-rheumatoid factor, you're more likely to get extra articular manifestations, which are symptoms outside the joint. Stuff like inflammatory fibrosis of your lung, stuff to, such as um, inflammation of your sclera, mucosal inflammation, uh, rheumatoid nodules, etc, etc, etc. Thank you for watching. Please make grandma happy. Get the 50 hematology notes from Patreon. Also, you can get all of my notes that I'm drawing for my videos. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for being part of Medicosis. I'll see you in the next video. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard.